Uh, one of the things that's interesting about running this year uh, is that uh, everybody from both sides of the aisle is talking about some form of regulation, some form of federal regulation. Uh, now, I, I have to admit that I, I am not 100% familiar with the specifics of the AIG case uh, to give you a definitive answer. Uh, but when we're talking about uh, voluntarily complying with federal regulations, uh, does that mean voluntary compliance? or does that mean uh, actually coming under federal regulations? I think what you're gonna see, uh, and I'm not saying this is the case with AIG specifically because I don't know, but I think what you're gonna see is now that everybody is talking about regulation, you're gonna see a lot of the, uh, the big players that have always made far more money than the rest of us have off of these bad deals, you're gonna see them talking about all sorts of voluntary regulations because they don't wanna come under real restrictive regulations. So this is what we gotta keep an eye on, and we have to make sure uh, that whoever we send up to Congress uh, is going to represent uh, the actual people in this district uh, and not the, the big money special interests. This next question is, do you support a national catastrophic fund? If so, why or why not? Is that um, like for hurricanes and that's it? I was thinking maybe it was healthcare, but Jeff, uh, okay. Here you go. Uh, most definitely. You know, we have a um, insurance situation in the state that uh, is very critical in the way we've structured our potential liability at the state level. If we have a major hurricane event or a series of major hurricane events uh, and we start talking about 20 or 30 or 40 billion dollars in losses, uh, state government is going to be in serious trouble. The only real solution to uh, our windstorm needs is a federal windstorm program very similar to our flood program. Right now when there's a major hurricane you have uh, homeowners and insurance companies arguing was this flood damage or was it water, or was it wind damage? That would eliminate all of that. Uh, having a windstorm program uh, working along with the flood program will solve all those problems. And quite frankly, I'm not sure why we don't have that. Every coastal state in this country would benefit from that. Uh, the states in, in uh, Tornado Alley would benefit from that. And so I would certainly advocate for a national windstorm program. I, I agree, and it could be an expansion of the National Flood Insurance Program. We just call it National Disasters Insurance Program, whatever. And it could include, as Senator Saunders said, uh, flood, wind, how about fire? They're having a raging one out there in California now. How about biohazard or other terrorist uh, catastrophe insurance? Yes, those kinds of things become like infrastructure, friends. You remember roads, bridges, ports, airports, fire, police, education, health care, <laughs> catastrophe coverage. Maybe a good thing for our federal government to become involved so that everybody uses it, everybody pays. Nobody's able to opt out, everybody's in so that the coverage is available to you when you suffer the disaster. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I, I think it's a great idea. Uh, there are uh, a couple of, uh, of caveats to that. Uh, the first is that uh, if we're going to talk about providing that coverage, we have to make sure uh, that the revenue is actually in place to, to cover it so that we're not increasing to the debt. Uh, the second thing is, uh, this is something that we have to be uh, keep a really good watchful eye out for. Um, over the past eight years, the uh, federal government has passed uh, a lot of laws uh, that uh, so far have gone unused but have the potential to really circumvent uh, uh, states' rights. Uh, one of the things uh, that, that's come up, and this sort of comes under the heading of disaster relief that makes me very nervous, uh, is up in Fort Stewart, Georgia right now, there is a brigade, a combat brigade, uh, returning from Iraq uh, that is being assigned uh, to uh, federal disaster relief, which doesn't sound like a bad thing until you actually read the description. That includes crowd control, uh, that includes uh, all sorts of things, and I don't want to sound like one of those black helicopter guys uh, that says the government is coming out to get us, but I think this is something that we as citizens need to keep a watchful eye on. The reason that I support a windstorm protection program is that if you think back to 2003, 2004, when we had all those series of horrible hurricanes, the insurance industry was suggesting that it was almost impossible to insure against those losses, that the storms were so catastrophic in their losses that you couldn't insure against them. 
That's why it makes sense to have a, a windstorm protection program. When you start talking about fire and flood and other types of things, uh, these are much more contained in, the terms, in terms of the amount of losses, and those are insurable things. But when you start talking about the major Category 5 storms ripping through Florida or for the Gulf Coast or through New York City or wherever, these are tens of billions, hundreds of billions of storm uh, dollars potentially in a, in a hurricane season. And a lot of folks believe that uh, with those types of catastrophic losses that, that hurricanes are really almost impossible to insure against other things you can't insure against. Yes. Are you familiar with the non-governmental international panel on climate change, the Heartland Institute, and yes, and their writings and message on global warming? Uh, could you refresh my memory, please, uh, whoever asked the question? Uh, are these? Uh, well, let me let me kind of kind of give a, a, a broad answer. You know, I read. Uh, so much about this issue, uh, uh, both for and against, uh, that it's kind of uh, difficult to, to, to keep track of who's saying who. Uh, but when we're talking about uh, climate change, I'll give you my position on this. Uh, I think the science is in. Uh, there is certainly such a thing as global climate change happening now, and there is definitely a man-made contribution to it. Now, how much of a contribution, uh, that is still open to debate, and that's what science is all about. There's a method for that. But what we have to do, uh, is we have to make sure that we take this into account whenever we're talking about finding solutions for global warming. Because right now I hear a lot of people out there and they're saying, well, it doesn't matter what caused it uh, as long as we fix it. Well, if you don't know what causes a problem, you're not going to be able to fix it. And this is the, uh, the approach that I would take. And I apologize, I'm not familiar with the uh, documents that the question contained, but I can tell you that Robert Neal is environmentally friendly. I, I believe that yes, it is the misconduct of man and the excess of man that causes global warming. But I believe man, if focused, could change that. If we would take a 1940s style Manhattan project and concentrate our brightest minds to find an alternative to fossil fuels, and I don't know if it's hydrogen, nuclear, Hydro, wind, solar, maybe a combination of all, maybe we're going to use the tides or the Gulf Stream. But if we will concentrate, we can do that and we can quit, A, burning the fossil fuels which injure our environment, and B, shipping $700 billion a year over to countries that might want to do harm to us. You know, I think uh, global climate change is, is probably a cyclical natural process that the Earth is going through. I do believe that there are some, uh, there is some evidence that human activity is exacerbating that, that uh, the uh, emissions of, of, of uh, greenhouse gases is accelerating perhaps or worsening uh, global climate change. But you know, quite frankly, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that we need to get away from our dependence on expensive foreign oil. We need to find cleaner uh, fuels, because we know that whether it's causing global warming or not, we know that burning fossil fuels for to generate electricity, for example, causes all other kinds of environmental uh, problems, such as, as mercury uh, in our food chain. And so we need to switch our economy from an oil-based kind of economy to one that uh, uses all sorts of alternative fuels like wind, solar, biomass, and nuclear. We have an energy policy for the state of Florida that does just that. Uh, we need to have an energy policy for our national government that does that on a national level to get us away from that the dependence. We're spending over $700 billion a year on expensive, unreliable foreign oil. Most of it is being used to power our vehicles or to generate electricity. We need to stop doing that, and there are ways to do that. Wrap-up time, and we go reverse alphabetical. So. Okay. And how long do we have for that? Two minutes. Two minutes. Okay. I'm just going to take 120 seconds. Not a, not a second more now. Uh, again, I want to thank you for giving me the honor of representing you in the Florida Senate for the last 10 years. I think I have a proven track record of work, working with independents, working with Democrats to solve problems. And I think that's what everybody expects. Once the elections are over, you expect everyone that's elected to work together to solve these really difficult problems, and I mentioned those before, like energy independence and immigration reform and health care, all the myriad of problems that are facing this country. 
Uh, for those of you that are concerned that there's going to be a split in the Republican vote and the Democrats going to get elected, the numbers don't work that way. There are only 25% registered Democrats in this congressional district. Uh, and I'm going to get my fair share of them, uh, Mr. Neal. Sorry to tell you that. Uh, the question is, is it going to be Connie Mack, the incumbent, or Bert Saunders? I am a Republican uh, running with no party affiliation. I need your support. I need your help to uh, win this election and bring this seat back to someone who's going to serve this community. Thank you very much. Senator Saunders extols his representation of you for the last 10 years, but yes, he wasn't confident enough to run head up against Congressman Mack in the Republican primary. So he may get some Democratic votes, but he, he, I may also get some Republican votes. Folks, if you send Senator Saunders to represent you, it will be just like having Congressman Mack representing you. They'll vote the same way. The only difference is Senator Saunders' smiling face, and he's always has a countenance that's smiling and happy. He's not ever sad or sourpuss, but his smiling face will be here in town, and Congressman Mack won't. But either way, you get the same representative. If that's what you want, no change, go right down this primrose path to a collapse of our banking industry, a collapse of our economy, a dependence on foreign oil. If that's what you want, go ahead and vote for either Senator Saunders or Congressman Mack. But if you want real change, my name is Robert Neal. I'm a candidate for the United States House of Representatives in Florida's 14th Congressional District, and I want to represent you in Washington. Thank you for inviting us tonight. You know, uh, some nights uh, I think of something that uh, a friend of mine, Chuck, who works for me, uh, told me a, a few nights back. Uh, he said, Jeff, no one's ever going to accuse you of being slick. And uh, I think that's true. And so you'll excuse me. Uh, I'm a little rough around the edges here, but there are two words that I'm really sick of hearing in this election, and that's Republican and Democrat. We need to get past this partisan nonsense, and the only way that we're going to get past it is if we change the way that business is done in Washington. Now, I told you, you know, what we're doing with this camera and what we're doing with the websites and everything, uh, we're trying to offer you unprecedented access. With me, uh, you're going to have somebody on this side of the river uh, who is going to represent you. Uh, you're going to have somebody who's going to listen, and you're going to have somebody who's going to be not only your voice in Washington, D.C., uh, but your eyes and ears and well as well. But this only works if we all work on this together. Now, uh, the idea that this race belongs to one party or the other is nonsense. This is a four-way race, which means that whoever wins this race could win this with 25% plus one vote. So I would urge you, when you go to the polls in November, to don't think about party politics. Think about the issues. Think about what's in your heart. And don't ever feel like voting your conscience is a waste of, vote, of your vote, because it's not. Thank you. Well, thank you all for attending tonight. And uh, the election's November 4th. We're going to run through the media real quick. Secretary report is online. Treasury report. Treasury report. No activity. Uh, lock status.
talking to Tammy Baker, actor, and we had one a really good like hour long video of her basically just uh, going down with the breaking down some of the issues on the NHS and you know, you know we, talk, we talk about global climate change and I mean this is something you know, some people don't seem to believe as, it but the insurance company is just as complex and, and, and convoluted and I mean it's, oh, it's really? a very complicated complex issue it's not something that you can learn overnight right. I mean which and I think is a lot of reason why people don't understand it because it's not a simple no fix is going to be simple or easy. Right. So it's 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 a very complicated complex issue and it's it's going to take some effort to learn it. But wow. I would encourage you to do that because like I said there's not a single person that's that's not affected by it. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I have to, have to look this stuff up. Thanks again. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. The other shoot this. <laughs> Did I grab the sign that was inside there? I got this Since one. you put any of those down. It is October 15th, 2008, and we are here at the Oasis Charter School. And uh, we just got done with our meeting uh, with the Southwest uh, Cape Coral Civic Association. And uh, small turnout, but there's a lot going on tonight, and it's always difficult uh, to get folks in Cape Coral uh, to any kind of uh, civic meeting. You know, growing up here in Cape Coral, one of the things I know about the city is this is perhaps one of the worst examples of suburban sprawl uh, in the country. And so a lot of times neighbors don't really know each other. There's not much of a sense of community. So it's really difficult to, to pull people together in this kind of environment. And this is one of the things that we have to work on. Uh, uh, in all honesty, uh, despite the fact that this is where I went to high school, this is where I went to middle school, I have to say that Cape Coral is not my favorite city in Southwest Florida. However, it is the most populous city and there's a lot of good people here. So just because uh, a town has poor planning, that doesn't mean uh, that you throw out the proverbial baby with the bathwater. Uh, you know, when you talk about the people, this is a good city, uh, but it takes a lot of effort to, to get people out. So that it's very cool that even if we have 15, 20 people like this in a meeting, uh, it really says something that they actually bother to show up. Uh, now, as far as uh, uh, you know, the political views of the people at these meetings, this is what this process is all about. You know, uh, in the last week, uh, we've seen a variety of different meetings. Uh, we've seen groups that have a definite uh, left-wing slant, and we've seen groups that have a definite right-wing slant. And uh, I have to uh, take time out to give props again and again uh, to Mr. Yield and to Senator Saunders for coming out here and mixing it up, because this is what democracy is all about. Uh, and I wish we could get uh, Congressman Mack out here as well. I, I was hoping that my my magic yellow tie that I only wore once before and that it seemed to summon uh, Connie Mack would work again tonight, uh, but, but no such luck. So we're going to keep uh, plugging away out here and uh, we're going to make sure that people understand that no party has a monopoly on the right thing to do, that there is no party that has a monopoly on this race. Uh, and the reason that people put stuff out like that is because they're afraid of losing. And I'm not afraid of losing. Uh, I'm not afraid of winning either. And I'm going to make sure that the people in this district have every option available to them and that they go out there and they vote their conscience.